Hey, what is up everybody? Dylan here from Iceberg TV, coming back at you with another fun episode of Weird Stuff Wednesday. Today, what I have to share with you guys is one of the only drivers I've seen with a thumb track. You can see it in the light just like that. We have the Discraft ESP Pulse that we're gonna test out here today. I don't know how I feel about drivers with a thumb track. I'm not a big thumb track guy, but I'm really curious to see how this guy actually flies. It's apparently an 11403. And although this is an out of production run, there is a swirly ledgestone drop that came out at least a year ago. They still have some over at Disc Golf Deals USA if you want to give these guys a try. Let's give this thing a pull, 11403. Oh, that's actually kind of nice. Make sure the camera doesn't blow over, holy cow. That thing flew really well. Thumb track technology across the top of the disc, I'm sure to some degree, affects the way the air passes over the top of the disc. It's not gonna have a fully smooth surface for the air to come across it while it's flying through the air. Um, someone who's a little more familiar with aerodynamics would be able to explain that a lot better than I can. Uh, my only way of experimenting of what this does is by throwing it. So let's give it another toss here, throwing into a pretty stiff headwind now. Oh, she is a flip dog in the headwind. Seems like once it gets turned over, it's gonna wanna stay turned over. We need to give that a few more throws and see if we can't dial this thing in. But I'm super curious and I need to know, do you guys bag any discs with a thumb track? The Kestaflas Berg uh, has always been and will always be one of my favorite disc golf discs of all time. Um, but when it comes to mids, fairways and distance drivers, I just am not convinced that a thumb track has a place at all. Uh, when it comes to my play style, but what do you guys think? Do you feel like there should be more drivers and faster discs with thumb tracks? Or do you feel like it's just not something that's gonna work for most people? And I wouldn't say this pulse is super beat up by any means. It's just, I mean, it's probably been thrown maybe like 50 or 60 times if I had to guess, but not super beat up, but certainly not flying like an 11403. I would say it's flying a lot more neutral than that and maybe even a touch more glidey than that. I'm gonna give it a nice firm flat throw into this tailwind, a little more height, see if we can get a much longer distance shot out of it. Oh, she, yeah, she turns, man. Oh, that went really, really far, but that is definitely flying more like a minus two turn. Again, I'm throwing into a pretty brisk tailwind, and I still, I mean, when that thing gets turned over, it just stays turned over. It's not necessarily a bad thing that it does turn so much, at least for me. Uh, maybe it flew a lot more stable when it was brand new or in other plastic blends, um, not in the ESP. Uh, let's start with a bit more hyzer, see if we can get a nice, like, neutral sort of hyzer flipping, dead straight pushing line. Definitely not flying like that zero turn and a four fade as advertised. I definitely want to give this guy a few more throws to really see if I can get like a nice pure line out of it. So far, it's we've gone pretty haywire. I'm gonna throw it with a lot of hyzer here. I mean, that was way more hyzer than I would ever comfortably throw a disc and it still had like a full flip and turn in the mid-flight. I wonder how that happens where a disc is supposed to be a zero four, but it flies like a minus two one. Somewhere along the lines in that testing process and aerodynamics process, the flight numbers just weren't accurate and like didn't carry over much. Or perhaps that's why they discontinued it altogether. There's a handful of discs I have in my collection that I really like that fly absolutely nothing like the flight numbers would indicate. And I think that's something that can happen if a company comes out with a disc and it says it flies like a 04, but then it flies like a minus two one. People may instinctively think it's a bad disc instead of actually thinking, what does this disc actually do when I throw it? and how does it actually fly for me? I feel like people get so fixated on the flight numbers that sometimes they may miss out on a really awesome disc or a really awesome flight path, maybe just because it wasn't exactly quite what they were expecting from it. And a great example of this, one of the discs in my collection is a pre-flight number Leopard, but that pre-flight number Leopard flies more like a 02 or a 03, um, which is probably why it found its way into the used bin that I found it in. Someone bought a Leopard looking for something flippy and it flew stable. But that Leopard is one of my favorite discs to throw in my whole collection because it just has that awesome feel and hand of the Leopard 
but then the awesome flight of a T-Bird. And it's one of my favorite discs to come out and throw, but the flight numbers are super misleading. And I believe to have the most fun in disc golf, you need to stay curious, you need to try new things, you need to get outside your comfort zone and play the game with an open mind, which is why I enjoy trying so many new discs, reviewing new discs, giving you guys the scoop on everything that's new. I enjoy that process and I try to go into every disc review with a completely blank slate and an open mind. And I try not to worry about the flight numbers too, too much. All right, let's give this thing two more throws. The wind has actually died down a little bit. I, th I think I can crush this thing if I hit it just perfectly. I think that's about as good as I'm gonna throw the pulse today. So got it to the golf green. I think that shot's probably right around 380, 390, somewhere in that range. By no means is an absolute crush, but I think I got a little bit more legit flight out of it there. We'll come back into the headwind one more time, see if we can't nail that hyzer flip shot on the last throw. And if you are looking to buy any discs or you need a disc golf bag, head over to discgolfdealsusa.com. The link to my store with them is in the description below. Please click the link, use my store, so they know that you came from this video. Or you can go to bergsdisksports.com if you're looking for the highest quality disc golf bag. Use my discount code ICE20 and you'll save 20% on this beautiful Minty V4. And we do also have a nice clean black version as well. So anyway, just wanna give my sponsors a quick shout out. Let's chuck this thing one more time. So when I've measured throws out here, getting to that flag is about 400. So we're not getting terrible distance out of it, but the thumb track definitely is not doing me any favors or the flight any favors, I don't think. All right, last throw back into the ripping headwind. I'm gonna try and hit it on hyzer on the left side of the fairway, see if we can't get a nice turning shot. That's as good as it's gonna get into the headwind. But once she gets turned over, she kind of just stays over, especially in that headwind. It's a really bizarre flight on that thing. Um, once you get it flipped, it's pretty much gone. I do have a handful of other discs ready to go for coming up episodes of Weird Stuff Wednesday. Been looking through a lot of used bins. I found a lot of really cool gems. Um, discontinued, out of production, like MVP and Axiom discs that I haven't done videos on yet. And I have a couple other old Arobi and Innova goodies that I need to do videos like this on as well. But if there's any weird discs that I have not tried in this series yet that you guys want to see me try and give a review on, let me know in the comment section down below what that is. And I will do my best to track one down and get some fun and exciting content out there for you guys to enjoy. All right, shout out to the Pulse enjoyers out there. Um, it's not my favorite distance driver, but it is a unique experience throwing a driver with this thumb track technology going around. Now I'd love to hear from somebody at Discraft. What went into the design of this disc? Why was it made the way it was? And what was the point? So if somebody knows that, let me know in the comments below. But I'll see you guys in the next video and take care.